Uh, I can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. My name is Min Kun Kim, and my work is supervised by Professor Martin Crane and Dr. Maria Bezbratka. And the title of my talk today is Applications of Bay Bayesian AI in Loss Resolving Prediction with a focus on the problem of model risk and data complexity. So I'm gonna start by giving you some brief, or brief outline of my talk. So first, I'm gonna I'll begin with some introduction to, to describe the challenges of today's AI model in actuarial practice. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna clarify some terminology and research problem, and which leads to my hypothesis and research question. And this follows by my, some, this followed by this, I, I'm gonna give you some brief overview of my findings from literature review, and which is followed by my work to date. And I'm gonna finish up with my research plan. So this flow chart illustrates some sort of the current AI modeling technique landscape with actual application. Well, this is an excerpt from some paper published by some society of actuaries. And when looking at this, my first impression is that they are going through some sort of pressure of demand of AI. And they were looking some, some just briefly looking at some each part of this diagram. And you might see that the scope of some, the scope of some uh, available AI, AI model is very limited. And then the paper states, the paper says the, some, the, there's some certain challenges which inherent in actual practice and which kind of, which triggers some sort of some mismatch between the current available model currently and the real life use cases. So my research, you know, start from some thinking about some clarify some, uh, so what are the, those challenges? And in particular, my some focal actuary area of my research is loss reserving and then the detailed some discussion will be presented in the next chapter, next section. So here is some uh, general challenges of actual practice that kind of cause some sort of mismatch between current AI models and then use cases. The first one I would say is uncertainty and second one is interpretability and third one is moral risk. So uncertainty problem in actual practice is like a start from the inference variability. In actual practice, this inference variability is treated as a, some sort of risk. So all the actuaries and there's some insurers so take this very seriously and then so sort of obliges them any actuarial model to be active with some sort of ability to produce full distribution so that they can perform some uncertainty analysis and quantification. And then, but not all AI models can produce, can play around with some full distribution. And then when it comes to interpretability, or basically some any AI model, which is black box AI model has no place in actuarial practice because um, in actuarial practice in so all the actuaries, all the insurers, they are, they are responsible to explain their and justify their decision based on the, you know, because decision for their client or some stakeholder. But as you know, not all AI model is considered interpretable. The lastly, the model risk is the, well, the, by definition, model risk means it refers to the, some adverse consequences, kind of, they came, that comes from some sort of decision based on some sort of incomplete data such as missing data or some sort of some measurement error. And then this one is very prevalent in actual practice because, because of some very complicated data engineering process and then with some regulation. But, you know, again, there are not many AI model can be fully some, 
you know, can be deal with the inadequate data issue. So let's leave this some um, challenges in, at this moment. Uh, let me just talk about so what is loss resolving, which is my ex my focal actual areas in my research. So loss resolving is very important field in actuarial practice because you know it is directly directly related to the the companies some okay, some, some financial solvency. So this equation this equation describes some insurance surplus capital structure. When looking at the U, it's a sort of seed money. And then this, this CT is sort of some, some income. And the ST is the outgo. So, which means if ST outgo is too huge, greater than the sum of U and U, sum of, sum of U and CT, which then it means the company will go broke. So each of terms is very, you know, it's very deep enough to deserve its own some further investigation. And then particularly the, the ST part is totally uncontrollable is because it's very stochastic. And ST is a sort of some, consider some, some linear combination of multiple different claim amount that will be reported in the future and which is very random. So we focus on UNCT they are some sort of deterministic, but particularly in my research, I'm more interested in U, and then which is associated with loss resolving. So the loss resolving can be best understood by using these two diagrams. The upper one, on the, on the top diagram on the top, is describing some sort of um, the fulfillment of liability. So when the event happened, and then this is reported, and then it goes through some, some thorough investigation and then you know, to figure out so if it's legitimate claims or not. And then some, some claims are paid and then the case is closed. So this makes the one single case, but when it considers multiple cases all together, it gives us some sort of some special form of uh, data which is called run of triangle. So this run of triangle consists of two parts, the upper triangle and the lower triangle. And the upper triangle is basically made out of some sort of all the payment observation. And then on the other, on the other hand, the lower triangle is sort of, as you might, as you might you know, imagine, is a sort of a, a future payment data. So which means, you know, you need, that's what you need to be carefully predict because it is you because it is required to determine the was that amount of capital to reserve. So here is the example of run of a triangle. So vertical axis is the origination year of the event. And the horizontal axis is a development of payment. And then the all bunch of numbers on the upper triangle is basically the historic is observed historically, historical payment pattern. So for example, so the first payment uh, on the, so the first payment made on the so claim originate in 2004 is 5,947. And then the same claim originate in 2004 is dragged into drag up to all the way up to nine years. And this one makes the full fulfillment of liability. But as you can see, you know, there's a some, uh, there's a, you cannot observe any some sort of payment data at the end of each uh, for the uh, origination year or as we goes down. The reason is that it haven't occurred yet. So the thing is, you know, I would say I would kind of, I'm thinking of this triangle. It's not that, you know, there's some problem. There's a catch in the triangle, I would say. And then because, you know, there's a two typical, typical some, um, two different types of delays, which is namely called IBNR, or RBNS. And this is going to be, you know, explained the next, next slide. So IBNR is stands for 
incurred but not reported data. RBNS stands for reported but not settled claim data. So when it comes to RBNS case, so event occurred and then claims are reported and some payment is made. The problem is the payments not fully made. So, so the thing is, if we using this data, using this payment value, then it has even to have some, some impact of measurement error. In comes, when it comes to IBNR case, the events happen, but it's not reported. Claims are not reported, but it's going to report it in no time. But at this moment, we, are, we don't have this data point. So if we're using this, it's going to have impact of missing data. So IBNR, RBNS is with sort of some challenges, particularly loads of reserving specific. So uh, the IBNR, RBNS all together then can cause some sort of certain, some, you know, some difficulties, which is a missing data challenge and measurement error challenge. And then at the same time, it can also cause some problem for heterogeneity between data and inter intercorrelation. The reason is that it's like some, you know, because of IBN and RBNS, you know, some, some data points, some values will be some measured, you know, repeatedly and then not fully, you know, settled. So it can cause some sort of correlation, unnecessary correlation. So such problems are characterized by, characterized as model risk. And this one is characterized as data complexity. So there we go. We can, you know, there's all the problems, you know, all the problems we have to deal with is coming to view here. So there is some uh, interpret interpretability problem, uncertainty problem, model risk problem, which is general, general challenge. And then loads of reserving specific problem. There's a model risk and data complexity. Of course, there's a model risk here, but this model risk comes from inadequate data, and this model risk comes from IBNR, RBNS. So when looking at the conventional approaches, so they have industry standard method to, you know, to predict the loss reserve. For example, chain letter method, von hutter fergus method, Cape code method is there. They just kind of account for certain, you know, they just, you know, they have, it, they just can account for a certain problem and interpret the prob interpretability problems there. But I would say it's a sort of temporary expedient because the model risk and data complex is totally ignored. So this graphic shows some sort of, you know, uh, encapsulate all the some challenges we have discussed so far. And now I'm gonna argue that Bayesian, so Bayesian, you know, paradigm can be solution. So this is my hypothesis and research question. So before we go any further, I, I'd like to give you some analogy of that captures some, some sort of so essence of Bayesian benefits. So namely, I would say flexible adoption of prior and then full distribution for the information of interest. So why is the prior then? The prior is like, you know, it's about the knowledge about the parameter. Let's see that some, if we have a model, the model is a robot, and the model and the robot has a bunch of some part, the mechanical part that just, you know, basically give you idea of model behavior. Like uh, it can so rotate, you know, you can have 40 degrees, 30 degrees, something like that. So the prior is knowledge about such mechanical part that, you know, that gives you idea of how model behave, right? So, but if you are non-Bayesian, then, you know, the, the, your model heavily rely on the quality of data, which means if data is something wrong, then your parameter inference totally messed up. But in Bayesian cases, you already have some knowledge of model behavior. You can have some clear picture on the likely behavior of your model. So that's the prior knowledge and Bayesian allows 
you to incorporate your prior knowledge into the model, which means you can have your own prior. You can made up. If you still have a clear picture on the model behavior, you can made up and that you can incorporate them. So each model has can have some comes with some form of distribution, probability distribution. So for example, this one is 40 degree allowed, 50 degree allowed, 70 degrees allowed, something like that. And then you might have some sort of you know interpretation, some sort of, oh, this one is this amount likely, and this one is this amount likely, something like that. So it gives a distribution. So now what you can do is plug them, plug this distribution back into the model. And then focusing on data, then your model spit out predictive distribution. When focusing on parameter, your model spit out a posterior distribution. So that's the benefit of Bayesian. You can incorporate some of your own knowledge about moral behavior and then it just and then so after that, what you can do is some sort of, you know, you can get keep some some very tight some, you know, control over your model. So here's my hypothesis. So my hypo hypothesis is like so more practically applicable baseline line model for the loss reserve prediction should be Bayesian to account for all these challenges. So particularly the first two challenges are basically. There's nothing to do when we use in Bayesian. This one is the you know, challenge is solved. But the, the last two challenge model is data complexity. This is basically um, loss of reserve in specific problem, which comes from IV and RBNS. But to deal with this, Bayesian need special tools. What tools? This means some tools to manipulate the prior. So it's all about you know, playing around this prior prior. So what is the goal? So my goal in my research is develop new hybrid Bayesian AI modeling technique for loss reserving tests. But I'm going to combine this a bunch of these different tools. So because each tool, each Bayesian tool, I'm going to explain in the next chapter, they just, they just useful to, you know, resolve one challenge one at a time. So but we need all the challenges need to be resolved at the, you know, all at the same time. That's why we need some hybrid model. So this is my research question on six Bayesian tools. So question number one, how to use the, this Bayesian tool to deal with model risk? And the second one, how to use this Bayesian tool to deal with data complexity? The third question, what are the additional benefits of the hybrid Bayesian sum tool as a, which is AI enhanced solution? And then what, what's the, what, to what extent this Bayesian tool can co cooperate together and yield a better prediction on this, you know, loss reserve, loss reserve. And the last one, I save it for supportive, res supportive research question because it aims to develop unbiased prior, uh, which is required all the rest of this, you know, experiment, you know, to provide to, you know, to result in some much proper, you know, proper outcome. So, and the relevant hyperparameter is also one of, you know, some was the research point as well. So here I'm going to give you an overview of my finding. Mainly is about the story of why Bayesian to could be solution. So this is my some Bayesian tools I'm gonna to consider in my research, where basically this, I use the same silly icons to you know to to show that each Bayesian tools are sort of just simply tools, you know, to manipulate this prior knowledge. So I'm gonna think you know, so I'm gonna you know discuss the inverse Monte Carlo and EM algorithm. Hierarchical base, empirical base, variational base, Bayesian network, Bayesian neural network, and then, yeah, so, and so on. And then the thing is, they are not mutually exclusive. And then, when necessary, you can combine them. Here is the example, you know, to account for model risk. So, so the Bayesian inverse Monte Carlo using of 
backward sampling and based on EM algorithm using latent space. And then this can, you know, to, you know, to account for moral risk. And this one is possible because based on modeling framework, framework allows you to have some flexible prior adoption as we discussed previously. So let's see the example. So when it comes Sorry, to- Sorry, Minkun, about five minutes remaining, okay? Oh, so when it comes to missing data, you know, this, this describes the, the how EM algorithm works and the, how this gives us the feedback loop with between the you know, prior knowledge and then parameter and then to obtain the, the best parameter at the end. So this one shows the measurement error cases, so how inverse Monte Carlo, you know, some counteract some other some measurement error in covariate by giving some loop between the fake data and the true data. So uh, in com in, when it comes to data complexity, the hierarchy causality bias variant trade-off is considered some sort of approach. And then each approach requires certain prior uh, certain form of prior, when it, for example, hierarchy approach need prior within prior, causality approach Markovian prior, bias trade variant trade trade of approach require unbiased prior, and this prior can be provided by this Bayesian tool. So here's the example of this Bayesian tool, and then here's so I'm gonna move on to the, my work today. So my work day, you know, uh, I'm gonna some was that the, this work, my work is in you know, my first experiment covered the research question one and two, and the, which is the hierarchy problem and then data com, hi, hierarchical base. And the research question two is about uh, is, uh, 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 some data, data measurement data model risk problem. And then so uh, the problem is that in target variable, uh, this, this experiment is about some you know, we have some on uh, uh, data we describe some um, workplace absenteeism. And then this, you know, the Y variable, the target variable is of sort of count data, which is the amount of time counted count data of some uh, absence hours. So which I think is follows Poisson assumption, but the thing is our data point, our data shows the over dispersion. So, and then which leads to the heterogeneity. That's why I need to think of, I need to consider hierarchic phase to counteract, to count, to overcome these issues. And in the covariate, there's a, we also, assumption is that we have some, the covariate has suffered from some uh, high, some measurement error. That's why I just explore inverse Monte Carlo approach here. So I choose the, I choose the negative binomial to describe my, or response variable. And then, as you can see, there's two parameter and mu is R. And then in my mind, the model behavior negative binomial, it depends on mu and R and the mu, mu, mu is described as a regression and the R is described as a gamma because R never, it cannot be, cannot be small, smaller than zero. So gamma distribution always gives them, you know, the positive value, that's why I, I assume, I assume, I assume, I assume, I imagine that the model behavior R should always greater than one, greater than zero. That's why I use in gamma distribution. And then mu, when it comes to mu, it requires, the, you know, it requires to solve the C and beta, this beta coefficient. So beta, in my mind, beta behave as a normal distribution and the C behave as a gamma distribution. So that's just a made up, some prior knowledge I incorporate in my research. And then, when it comes to some measurement error in covariate, I use inverse Monte Carlo. As you can see, I just artificially add some, some, you know, some noise on purpose so that it can, you know, counteract the, some error in the covariate. And I made a loop, I made a feedback loop to obtain the some most possible parameters at the end. So here is the result of my research. So you know, inverse Monte Carlo, you know, produce a bunch of some prior distributions there. And I, I plug back into the model and then focus on, I plug back into the model, in the negative binomial model and produce the predictive distribution, which is shown in the bottom here. And then, so to compare, to, to evaluate the performance of my model, I compare this with some ordinary Poisson, Poisson regression. 
with that using you know, the ordinary some mean um, maximum likelihood and in inference and maximum likelihood some technique. And then at the end, uh, when looking at the mean scale error, my model shows a little bit better performance than or, you know, some conventional model. So here's my research plan. So, so I hope to I hope to continue my you know experiment on unbiased prior, you know, of you know until the thesis write up you know 2023, and then at the same time and which covers the research question four, and at the same time I want to continue my more technical research you know of for the first two quarters next year, which cover, which aligns to research question one and two. And then I plan to work on some hybridization research, focus on neural network, and then its variation in the, in the following, two, following two quarters. And then another hybridization research about Bayesian network and the, its variation uh, and another two quarters. And then Finally, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave myself for around some sort of six months, you know, for the you know, to focus on this is right up. So this is my detailed schedule for my research plan. Then finally, my publication plan. You know, I just in next. I'm gonna kind of thinking about the conferences for paper submission. The listed here, and then and then my first experiment about hierarchical base and inverse Monte Carlo is already submitted. Journal of Statistics Computational Simulation. That's it for now. And any questions is welcome. Any is I welcome any question you might have. So thank you. Thank you, Minkun. Uh, you're just coming in on time there. So thanks very much for that. Yeah. Um, I think we have a small audience today, but I'd like to give us the opportunity for people to ask some questions if there yeah. are any there. So I don't think we have any questions coming through. So I think we can move on to the next part of the examination. So I'd ask our audience now to leave us and we'll continue with just the examiners and the supervisors. So just take a moment for people to leave.